Yeah, hello. This is Chris Busby again. Um, I, I I got such a, a a large such a good response from my uh, Facebook post on on the issue of the Russian poisoning of the Skripals that I thought I'd, I'd I'd say something on YouTube as well about it so that I could reach more people because it's quite an important issue for various reasons that I'll explain. The first thing I need to say about all of this is that I am an expert in this area. If I'm an expert in any area, this is the area I'm expert in. I worked for several years at the Wellcome Research Laboratories in Beckenham on the physical chemistry of pharmaceutical compounds, uh, or small organic compounds. Um, and my job there, apart from the research aspect, which was to do with how these things work at the molecular level, was uh, to develop and use uh, spectroscopic and other methods to determine the structure of these substances as they were made by the um, chemists who, who synthesized these molecules for testing. So I spent a long time figuring out what the molecular structure of these things were, which means I know, I know, I know how it's done. Also, I did my first PhD at Queen Mary College London uh, on a similar project involving synthesizing small organic molecules in order to investigate their properties, their acidity constants and stuff like that. So that's where I'm coming from here. I do happen to know about this stuff. So what I can say uh, is that the, first of all, that the substance, the A234 substance, which uh, Port and Dan tell us they've identified as being the material that poisoned the Skripals, that is not something that would be that you would need to have a state actor to make. I mean, it's it, it's a, just a, a basic uh, organic chemical s synthesis. Um, the, the only difficulty about it would be its extraordinary toxicity. So you'd need to have a good fume cupboard system and protective equipment so as to not to get it on yourself and kill yourself or one of your technicians but it's not particularly difficult to make it's any synthetic organic chemist would be able to knock up something like that without a lot of difficulty so that's the first thing so it doesn't have to have been made in a fancy laboratory but the second and more important thing is that the way in which you investigate the structure you identify the the material is you take a sample and in, and in this case probably it wouldn't be an awful lot of it, but, but nowadays there are all sorts of very sophisticated machines. And what you would do is you would, you would then examine it using uh, gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. Uh, it's the mass spectrometry that would give you the molecular iron and the molecular iron fragments as this material disintegrated inside the various um, methods that they have for breaking molecules up into little bits and then shooting them down a mass spectrometer to measure the, the actual iron fragment masses. And that spectrum, the spectrum of the mass spectrometer result, would identify the material. Um, but in order to do that, you'd have to have a, a, an, exa a, an example of a material. You'd have to synthesize the material in order to have a, a pattern that showed you um, whether what it was you, you were looking at was the same thing. So you would have a lot of you'd have a lot of bands in the mass spectrum and you'd, you'd look for the same bands. It's, it's effectively a spectrometry issue. But the important thing is you have to have a sample to start off with in order to find the particular material. Now we used to do a lot of work on this in order to find um, drugs that had been um, synthesized in India or, or in Spain or in various countries. Uh, which were the same as the drugs that, that Wellcome had patented. And the idea was that uh, you, you could show that those drugs had been um, synthesized in a particular laboratory or in a particular country because you would have samples of those that would enable you to find impurities. So it's the impurity fragments inside the spectrum of the material that enable you to, to identify its source. Now, um, there is no way as far as I can tell, or certainly they haven't told us, in which Port and Dan uh, could have obtained material from Russia which they could have compared to the, to the material that was found 
in the Skripal's house or on the car or wherever it was they found it. And we, we, we hear lots of different stories about where it came, where it was found, where it was detected. So the first thing that we have to say is that, is that if they're saying that they know where it came from in Russia, they're lying because they can't know that. They would not be able to, to know that unless they had a sample of the material from Russia that they could compare it to. And how could they get such a thing? And today in the Times, uh, or I, I see another, uh, you know, now that this is, now that the Horton Down has said that they can't identify the material as having come from Russia, of course there's a lot of egg on face all over the place, so Boris Johnson and, and that stupid woman Theresa May. Um, and they're now saying that they have this evidence, which they have to keep secret, of course, that it came from some facility in, 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 in uh, Russia. But then the question is, how on earth did they get a sample from that facility in Russia? It's just not, it's not, it's not possible. It's not possible. So they're lying, as usual. They're just trying to cover their back because they're looking stupid, and they're increasingly looking increasingly stupid. The only thing we do know about it is that this material, the exact same material, was, was synthesized in the United States uh, Chemical Warfare Depot, or, or site, uh, in the United States, and uh, and somebody put the fragmentation pattern on the on the uh, scientific NIST National Institute of Science and Technology website, although they've since taken it off. So we certainly know that the Americans synthesised it, and it's, it's probably quite reasonable to suppose, suppose that Port and Dan synthesised it as well. If you want to know my opinion, I believe that this is either material from Port and Down or it's material from the United States, and this was a false flag operation along, along the lines of the same sorts of false flag operations that led to the Iraq war. And the Iraq war, you remember, was fought because of the idea of weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein had, but of course he didn't have anything of the sort. So that was also bogus. And the real reason for the attack of, of Iraq which we don't need to go into too much here, but it's about the, it was because Saddam Hussein had decided to uh, uh, stop paying for his, um, uh, stop asking for dollars for the oil and to sell it in euros. And when Gaddafi decided to do the same thing and set up an, Iraq, uh, set up a, an Arabic dinar based on gold, he was taken out as well. And then the Syrians decided that they were going to sell oil, not in dollars, but in, in euros. And of course they were invaded too. So what this is all about is the end of the European is the end of the United States Empire, the petrodollar empire. Basically, that's it. The Russians have now built the pipelines to China, and they're going to start trading their oil directly with China uh, on the basis of yuan. And China is be is becoming one of the largest um, importers of oil now because of its huge expansion. And so they're going to ask the Saudis to start paying in yuan and not in dollars, and so basically the, the dollar control of trade is going down the toilet rapidly. So of course something has to be done, and what's being done is a, is a, is a war is being engendered. Uh, and this is terrifying, because, because the fact is that, that and this is where I, my other expertise comes in, that nobody can win such a war if they have a, even a limited nuclear exchange, if, if, if the materials if the radioactive materials fall all over the place, then that's the end of it. That's the end of it. This is because the risk model that they have, which tells them that the stupid people like Theresa May and Boris Johnson and all those stupid fools, possibly Trump as well, that the risk model, the radiation risk model that tells those people that they can survive a nuclear war is, is, is wrong by factors of up to 10,000 times. And we've already seen the effects of, the, of just the nuclear weapons testing. We now see increases in, in cancer in, in people who were the children who were born to the children who were born at the time of the nuclear testing. And very recently I saw another piece of evidence um, relating to this, that in fact young men um, are more likely to father Down syndrome children than old men like me. Okay. So the rate that if, if I were to marry a 30-year-old girl and have a baby, the probability of it being a Down syndrome baby is five times less than if I was age 20. Yes? Okay, imagine that. Anyway, that's enough, enough horror show. Um, but just to, to make it perfectly clear, and that's why I'm putting this video up, 
that there's no way in which there's any proof that that material that poisoned the Skripals um, came from Russia. That's, that's, that's the take-home message. Okay, thank you for listening. Talk to you again.